Now, before the start of this video, I have to make a quick disclaimer. I am in no way endorsing or encouraging any of the actions done by the subjects of this video. This video is not meant to glorify violence, whether on the battlefield or in a sexual context. Because when we talk about the life of Genghis Khan, one of the most notorious conquerors in history, who at his peak created the largest empire of all time by geographical size, it stokes a lot of emotions. Emotions of savagery, of awe, of fear, even to this day. But one thing that I think is very important to keep in mind is that oftentimes, morality has to be taken into the context of time and place. It's very easy for us to sit on our high horse and say that conquerors from the past were bad people, especially when we've been privileged enough to have grown up in an era of unprecedented peace. We've never known what it's like to be living in a time where it's literally kill or be killed. And so I just think we should all keep in mind Shakespeare's quote, there is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Which brings us to today's topic, Genghis Khan. It's fascinating reading about his life and how he grew up. Before he was known as the Great Conqueror, he was simply known as Temujin. There's actually a great video on YouTube that goes into the details of his early life, which I'm gonna link here, since that's not really what this video is about. But as a TLDR, Temujin grew up to a royal clan within the Mongols. When he was nine, his father was poisoned, and Temujin was held captive by his former supporters. He later escaped from his captors, killed his half-brother, and began gathering supporters and recruiting loyal followers. Oh, and by the way, he did this all as a teenager. Pretty badass if you ask me. After becoming the head of his clan, Genghis Khan forged alliances with other clans and overpowered enemy tribes such as the Tatars. In 1206, an assembly of leaders declared him emperor, i.e. Khan, of the Mongolian steppe. Eventually, he was able to extend his Mongolian empire across Asia to the Adriatic Sea, where he ruled with an iron fist. Now, of course, he committed lots of violence, plundering, rape, and more, but Genghis Khan also displayed certain traits that we as men could all incorporate into our lives today, in a smaller scale of course. He had great physical strength, he was absolutely single-minded in his purpose, and he had an unbreakable will. He wasn't necessarily stubborn either, he would listen to the advice of other people, including his own wives and his mother. He was flexible, he knew how to play politics, but he wasn't necessarily petty or backstabbing. He had a sense of loyalty. He had a rigid code of values that he would live his life by. He was also extremely charismatic. This guy could easily attract the loyalty of men who were willing to serve and die for him, both his fellow nomads and civilized men from the settled world. And if you look into the reasons why he was so successful in his quests, you'll find a man who was incredibly organized. He was extremely disciplined. He was mobile, flexible, able to learn and adapt as the situation demanded. I'll just give you a quote of his that really emphasized this mantra of having an end in mind, having a vision, and setting out to accomplish that goal whatever it took in a strategic manner. Quote, Without the vision of a goal, a man cannot manage his own life, much less the lives of others. The ancients had a saying, unity of purpose is a fortune in affliction. In fact, one example of this was his conquest of the Jin dynasty in China, specifically during the Battle of Yehuling in 1211 AD. It was the first major decisive victory by the Mongols that allowed them to overrun and conquer the northern part of the Jin, thus hastening the decline of the Chinese dynasty. 
As always, Genghis Khan was leading the charge, along with his trusted generals Subutai and Mulaki, who are both revered as some of the greatest military strategists of all time. He knew that the Jin had built their Great Wall as a means of stopping him, since he sent his scouts to keep watch on the wall before he actually engaged in battle. He knew that the Great Wall was backed by numerous castles and towers, was defended by nearly a million Jin Imperial soldiers, which was composed of 800,000 infantry and 150,000 elite cavalry. Although the Jin Imperial Army outnumbered the invading Mongol forces nearly 10 times its own, the Jin Emperor Wan Yan Chen Yu ordered them to be spread out throughout the wall in an attempt to block the Mongol approach, meaning in any one place, several sections of the wall have only a few defenders on them. The wall wasn't one long defensive wall, but layers upon layers of many walls, not connected with each other, but reinforced by castles and fortresses. Genghis Khan recognized this from the intelligence gained from his scouts, and recognized that the least defended part of the wall was at the Wuxia Fortress, where he attacked. He sent his third son, Ogade, to launch a separate attack on the western Jin capital, Xijing, and block enemy reinforcements while the Great Khan himself led the main battle at Wuxia. He broke through the enemy defense lines, wiped out the Jin forces, and eventually kept moving further and further south, continuing their attack and conquering the rest of the Jin. See, between this and his other notable conquest of the Khwarazmian Empire, Genghis Khan understood the key principles of achieving success in the largest possible scale. He knew that luck meant opportunity meeting preparation. See, Genghis Khan showed us that it all starts with a vision. That you can start small, but you have to know where you want to go. But he also showed us that achieving a vision doesn't usually work right away. And we need to be willing to test, build, plan, and reassess our plans. While there's not much written down about what Genghis Khan envisioned in building up his empire, he had the insight that if one person dreams a dream, it is but a dream. But if a people dream that dream, then it becomes a reality. In this, we see that Genghis Khan not only had a clear goal, but it was so clear that he could effectively transmit that dream onto others. This ability was probably one of the biggest keys to his tremendous success. See, this is a principle that we can all apply to our lives today. Whatever goal you have in your life, whether it's making more money, dating hotter women, you need to be concrete in what your goal actually is. You have to visualize yourself achieving that goal and then systemically breaking it down into tiny little steps that you can take action on. Eventually, with enough tenacity, with enough strategy, and especially discipline, you will find a breakthrough. Another big lesson you can take away from here is the power of human capital. If you have a goal, you don't have to always try and do it yourself. Surround yourself with highly capable men. Men who are worthy of being a part of your inner tribe, who can aid you in your goal for conquest, whether on the battlefield or in the club. In fact, I'll point you to another example of how Genghis Khan did this well. Every kingdom or tribe he conquered that eventually became part of the Mongolian Empire was governed by a code of law called the Yasa. The Mongol Empire didn't really emphasize the importance of ethnicity and race, instead adopting an approach grounded in meritocracy. The Mongol Empire was one of the most ethnically and culturally diverse empires in history, as you can see with its size. Every inhabitant just considered themselves Mongols. 
The Mongol Empire practiced religious tolerance because Mongol tradition always held the belief that religion was personal, and it wasn't subject to law or interference. In fact, Genghis himself was interested in learning philosophical and moral lessons from other religions. He would consult Buddhist monks, Zen monks, Muslims, Christian missionaries, and Taoist monks. And he knew that each culture he came across had their own unique talents and adopted new ideas, techniques, and tools from the people he conquered. For example, he would employ Muslim and Chinese siege engines and engineers to aid the Mongol cavalry in capturing cities. This is what I mean when I say you have to have a flexible approach in achieving your goals. Listen to other people's perspectives, implement what's useful, and then discard what isn't. Genghis understood his people. He understood it wasn't just about him. He understood the universal principle that whatever your vision is, if you can learn how to effectively communicate with others, inspire them, and work with them, then the greater your impact will be on the world. Now, I want to conclude this video with a final statement. I'm not saying Genghis was a good person. I'm not saying anyone should idolize him or the things he did. The man brought about unspeakable destruction to many parts of the world. But what I am saying is that he was an extremely competent man who demonstrated many of the principles that are required to achieve a grandiose vision, who built the foundation for what would eventually become the Mongolian Empire that would go on to become the greatest continental empire during the medieval and modern times. And let's be real, he was kind of a badass in some ways, riding around in his horse with a bunch of his posse, overcoming every obstacle in his path, taking what he wanted, wedding new wives. I'm not saying the world would be a better place if everyone were like him, but I do think it would improve everyone's lives if they were to take away even just an ounce of his discipline, tolerance, and sense of purpose. So that's it for the video. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below since I know it's a bit different from the style of content I normally do. If you like it, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Peace.